Ackman. And then the pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, Michael. So as I said earlier, we do have Dean Schramm here tonight to speak with us. So Dean Schramm, the floor is yours. Well, thanks, I appreciate it. I always appreciate coming to um, SGA and, and certainly um, under any circumstances, whether that is uh, on Zoom or in person, I uh, appreciate so much being here. So, um, you know, this is unusual times and unusual circumstances. So, you know, when um, Annie and I talked briefly, uh, you know, where do you want me to go? A lot of you have already heard the, uh, the spiel about the Dean of Students Office. I mean, I certainly, um, I'm always happy to talk about um, support and advocacy that we offer to students. And I'm happy to talk about COVID, however that might um, impact us. So Annie had said, maybe just a brief, kind of a brief summary on some of what's going on around the coronavirus at the University of Dayton. So um, I, I don't think I can really talk about it without saying the last couple of weeks have really been pretty remarkable. Um, we are lower than the, um, the, the, the county um, much less the state. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that our numbers are really what helped the county um, and um, uh, with the, the overall rate. And that was kind of a good place to be, particularly with such a really rough beginning. So um, I think that we have really been a model. I think we've been a model for other schools. Um, I have seen an increase over these couple of weeks, or over this last week. I don't know what that will mean for our overall, um, but we were told by our medical folks, you are probably gonna see an increase when you see an increase overall right it's going to impact the, it's going to impact us and there'll be an increase so um i suspect that we will see one i'm not seeing a huge jump i'm also seeing students being tremendously responsible um uh, navigating your um everyday experience right so um we've had absolutely no indication that any of this is happening or any of the spread is happening um, in the classroom, um, which is what we had suspected. The classroom is probably one of the uh, more safer spaces if you're going to be with people, right? I mean, obviously the best you can be is, is, is quarantine or isolated, but um, we're not seeing any evidence and anything happening in the classroom, which is really encouraging as we um, continue to think about what's going to happen next semester. So I'm gonna kind of bookmark next semester for just a minute, because that's where I, I, I ultimately intend to go. Um, uh, students have been working really hard, I think, in their personal endeavors. I have, um, I've been in the student neighborhood every Saturday um, and Saturday afternoon, walking the streets with the fellows and public safeties, so that at least I have a, I can say I've seen it too. Um, and, you know, for the most part, students have been tremendously cooperative and wanting to be able to stay in session and know what that means. Um, so I think it's impact some people's social choices. Um, there's always those that we're concerned about, right, for those that it hasn't impacted. Um, so those folks have been talked to maybe once, maybe twice. Um, and of course, we're seeing it's, it's difficult for those in the residence halls. Um, I, you know, I'm been, uh, talking to our underclass or under under division students and it's it's hard, right? I mean, it, the whole nature of the residential experience in a residence hall is an open door policy. So I really appreciate what's happening in the residence halls and how people are trying to manage. Um, we've seen a rise in vandalism. One, I can't be surprised. Two, I'm always disappointed. Um, there's no reason to be busting out ceiling tiles and stealing exit signs. It's just not what a civil, respectful community does. So there's lots of, you know, floor meetings and 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 lots of imploring students to um, please don't damage property. It's your home, um, and even if you don't see it as your home, it's somebody else's, and be respectful to it. Um, but we have also not seen a big rise in any of the um, uh, rate in the residence halls either. So. Um, we are, I think that we're holding and we're managing our own. And I, I can speak for myself. I certainly had my doubts 
that we would have made it. And, and I can look at my dear, dear um, colleague and we've, we had those conversations, Amy, and I certainly can look at Natalie and Annie and we had a couple of nail biting moments, right? when we were putting some of this together and saying, I really wonder if we can do it. And gosh, darn it. I choke up a little bit when I think about it. I think we did it. Um, and, and that's really worth something to celebrate because it was a community effort. I think we've proven, um, we've proven ourselves and that's a, really, that's a really awesome place to be. But we're gonna have to prove ourselves next semester. And that's where I wanna go. Um, Next semester is absolutely still up in the air. I can say with all confidence, um, it is a, a conversation and an issue that is being worked on every day about what is the next best course of action for next semester. We have gone from not testing to testing. We've gone from testing at home to bringing it here to having it tested here. Currently where we stand is we do want every student to have a test when they come back in January. The university is currently pursuing being able to do that testing on site so that we have the best, most accurate reading of what our population, um, that our population when they come in here will be like at ground zero. I mean, I, you'll have to excuse me. I don't really, the medical terms always escape me, but we're gonna have to, you know, we're gonna be where a place where we know who has it and we know who doesn't, right? Um, but that's fraught with lots of uh, logistical challenges. So we're gonna need, right? 7,000 to 8,000 tests. They're gonna, we're gonna have to have the appropriate machinery right here on the ground so that you get tested in that moment. If you have a positive test, you're gonna have to go home. You can't come on campus. That's gonna make a lot of people unhappy, right? You just traveled 500 miles. So now what do you do when you're here and you have it? So it's, it's those kind of things that are still currently being talked about. We absolutely wanted to start the semester off with people starting to move on in January 9th. I don't know if we can, if we can reasonably do it in that time frame. So we may begin and start online while big people move in and we're able to test people appropriately safely and accurately. So that may push the semester for us in to have the hybrid approach to classes that may end a little, that may start, not end, start a, a little later in January. Can't even begin to give you a date, right? Um, but I, I know that we've been going back and forth on um, what that looks like and how many students can we test at one time and that will be able to tell us when we can begin some online classes. So um, I still think that is, and then, and then we still are um, trying to be able to work as a good partner in the city so that um, we can also get our clues from Montgomery County Public Health from the governor's office, um, from those folks who say, yes, please stay, yes, please go. Um, this is what you need to be able to stay safe. Um, even when we had our spike, right, of a thousand students with it, Montgomery Public County Health was really um, appreciative with how we managed um, and how we were taking care of quarantined and isolation space. So um, they could always pull the plug at any time. So that's kind of the, uh, you know, it's, it is, I want to say it's, you know, the 20,000 view, but it's really not. It's kind of where we are right now in the trenches. Um, these conversations are happening every day. Um, I know we have a meeting tomorrow with our medical experts with a list of questions um, to include what's the best kind of test we can get and how many tests can we get. Um, and um, we want a test that has high accuracy that's going to be reading folks in the moment that you will wait 10 and 15 minutes and you'll be able to get the answer um, of your positive or negative test. So there's lots to talk about, I know, um, but I'm certainly happy to, to at least begin to try to answer the questions um, or talk about whatever might be on your mind. All right, thank you, Dean Schramm. If anyone has any questions, just go ahead and feel free to unmute yourself. Are people asking you a lot of stuff? What's going on? Here, I'll start us off. 
Thanks, for, Mason. Uh, questions. So um, you said that next semester as a whole is up in the air. Um, what are the sort of um, stipulations for us returning to campus? Um, like, what do they look like? Maybe um, COVID statistics in Montgomery County or Ohio in general? No, I think what it is, is can we appropriately test folks and how many people we can test a day? We're coming back. That's for sure. Um, we've gotten the thumbs up, people know it. The question is at the pace in which we can test people. So can we get a, can we get a thousand people in a day? That will, de that will determine move in, right? Can we get, I don't think we can do a thousand. It doesn't sound like we can turn around that many students at that time, but you know, maybe we can. Um, there's been, there's been talk about, um, kind of a wide scale assistance, whether that's the Ohio National Guard coming in so that we can test people quickly and fast. Um, it's certainly not in a, in a, in a volunteer capacity. I mean, this would be, these would be folks on the ground testing folks so that we can get people in and on campus quickly. Um, that, that, that's, that's the, that's the part that's up in the air. I think we're confident, we can confidently say we're come. I, I, I haven't heard anything saying we're not. We are coming back to campus. The question is, is it the ninth? Is it the 10th? Is it the 15th? Is it how, and, and how we can test folks. It's all about that. I just have a quick question. Um, I know that um, in the summer in the working groups, they were talking about programming and having different events for students to attend to just kind of keep them busy and um, kind of doing COVID conscious activities instead of mm -hmm. like partaking in um, some of the more riskier things. Um, has there been any talks about those types of events yet for next semester? Uh, um, absolutely. Uh, there's a committee been formed that will be chaired by Amy Lopez Matthews, the executive director. and. Um, to put together comprehensive programming so that we'll make sure that students have um, options and opportunities and interactions to, you know, hopefully keep folks busy um, in the beginning of the semester. And particularly if we get people on campus before classes start, that could happen or it might not happen. But yes, Natalie and, and Amy can probably speak to that better because um, she'll be sharing it. Thank you. And I don't have any information yet. So we're waiting for the first meeting and give our, we'll be given a charge and then I can certainly keep SBA updated. Um, hi, my name is Shada. I'm a junior. Um, hey, Jada. Hello. Um, I had a question. So um, right now it's looking like there's going to be a possible COVID vaccination coming up mm -hmm. um, with all science, which is really exciting and, you know, very innovative. Um, this semester, um, the university did um, require students who were able to to get their flu shot. Um, if a COVID vaccination is coming and it's on its way, is the university planning to take the same route with a COVID vaccination? Or are they going to take a different approach since it is very new and you know there's a lot of room for errors right i don't know i couldn't even begin to ask um i have no idea jada it's a terrific question i will certainly ask the medical panel that um uh but i yeah i can't even i i'm i'm, I'm stumbling because i you know i always like to to postulate right i mean i don't know i don't know what No, I understand. I just, I understand because, um, you know, everything's still up in the air. So I just was wondering, you know, maybe if you had an answer. Yeah. But I do have um, another concern. Sure. Uh, so me, myself, I was recently in quarantine because my roommate, um, unfortunately, got um, tested positive with COVID. Um, I was lucky enough to not test positive. Um, I actually tested negative three times um, while I was in quarantine. So, um, but one thing that I think is really concerning is that um, I live in a two person house. So she um, moved out um, to quarantine and I got to stay in my house by myself. But um, after I tested negative, I had the idea that I might be able to get out of quarantine since I didn't like test. Um, and I did have to stay in quarantine, which is fine. I definitely get that protocol and I get the reasoning behind it. Um, however, since I wasn't able to leave my house, um, I was actually running out of groceries and I was running out of food and I was running out of, um, you know, resources to kind of keep myself fed. So um, with that, I know I the Dean's office definitely has a role in um, interacting with students and making sure they fill out their daily reports and all that. 
but um, what kind of financial um, responsibilities do students have who are in quarantine? Because um, I actually did request um, funding to um, help myself get groceries and they did provide me a gift card, but um, like, you know, I, I was still kind of like struggling to like feed, honestly feed myself in, it was just a very, very frustrating situation. And I know that's something a lot of students um, have to face when they're in quarantine, um, when they're starting to run out of the money and they're not able to work necessarily from home or work in their campus job or work whatever. So um, is there any like concerns that the Dean of Students Office has with that or is working on providing more financial assistance for students who are in that kind of situation and don't really have the financial ability to be able to support themselves for two weeks uninterrupted? Yeah, Jada, I appreciate that because that has come to my attention, um, uh, not in your particular circumstance, but into others. So there's a couple things that have been hap that, that has happened. One is if you know of anybody who is in that circumstance or you are quarantined or in isolation and you're not really sure you, you need that kind of assistance or someone to talk to, I strongly encourage, you've been assigned a case manager. That case manager has is specifically designated toward you. Um, that anyone who's either been tested positive or close contact, not your contact tracer, right? Because your contact tracer does the homework of trying to figure out, but your case manager, and that case manager is assigned to you that you you are able to address all those situations, and that is your so that would be handled, Jada. If something if somebody got into a circumstance and needs more than a gift card, um, then that you tell your case manager. The case manager then who reports to the dean of students office as they have they said hey this student is in this circumstance what can we do um and we have provided food we've just had food food service has been terrific dining services um we've been able to have food delivered to to homes not just necessarily to our university houses not not of course not just in isolation or in, in residence halls or those places um, we've been able to manage each situation individually, which is very who, much who we are, right? So um, I would strongly encourage you talk to your assigned case manager and I'll do what I can. And that's what I've done in the past is deliver food. We've bought, we've gotten books for students who forgot their books. If they've gone to the Marriott and they forgot their books, we've had their books delivered. Um, there's ways we've been able to, um, manage individual situations. I hope that helps, Jada. I'm actually out of quarantine now. So, <laughs> but Yay. it's just something I just thought was important to bring up because yep. I think situations like that, not that I um, don't feel like students can't reach out for help when they need it, but just to make sure that we do have like systems in place to where do. when people have that kind of situation that they're able to get help. So thank you for yep. clarifying that for me. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Jada. Those case managers have really been a terrific, I think, one of the things that I, as I said before, has been a model for other schools has been particularly around this case manager um, model that a student is uh, designated a, a person to be able that they can say, you know, here's, I'm struggling with my class here because this particular teacher, or I'm struggling with it here so that, in, so that someone connected to the university can be an advocate for you. I think that's been a pretty decent model. A quick question, kind of going off Jada's. Um, Hi, Tommy. Hello, how's it going? Good. As far as the flu shots, do you have any numbers as far as what percentage um, of students actually took the flu shot versus signed the waiver to skip on it? Oh, I don't. Do you I was want just me kind to of ask? curious. I can ask I mean, and let Natalie know. Okay, yeah, if you don't mind. I was just curious as to how many people decided to opt out of it. No problem. Thank you. I, I assume we can get that answer if not, but I'll get back to Natalie and Annie with it. All right, sounds good, thank you. No problem, that's a great question. You do wonder. I mean, the lineup was, you know, all the way up to like VWK. So I, I, can, I hope it wasn't a lot. I hope people just did it, but who knows. Uh, hi, Dean Schramm, thank you for hey, coming Dave. today. How are you? I'm really, I'm doing great. So okay. my question for you is uh, that given so many students have already had COVID, will the uh, the same restrictions still apply to those students next semester, particularly the close contact isolation rules? Until we get more information about reinfection rates, 
Yes. We're getting mixed signals about reinfections. You know, we got someone in Arizona who got reinfected and now they're finding out there's more and something in Wisconsin. They, they cite all these stuff and I'm like, I nod like I know. Um, but until we get more information about reinfection rates, I think that that, that, that will certainly be happening. And I know that they're cross-referencing folks too, so that when somebody's tested positive, we go through to see if. Do you know of any reinfection rates among UD students or even greater Dayton? No, I don't know anything. There, we have not had any reinfection rates here at the University of Dayton. I can I share that with you. As in for the city of Dayton, I have no idea. Okay, thank you, Dean. Mm -hmm. I know, because that's going to be a real pain, right? It's going to be a real pain. We got 1,500 people who probably, we're about at 1,500, I think, maybe closer to 1,400. Yeah, and you're having to go into quarantine space. Ugh, I know, I know, I know, I know. We're all going to have to keep on wearing masks. Yeah, we're all going to have to keep wearing masks, even outside. Some of wearing masks is though, we just don't know who's had it and who hasn't, right? I mean, it's just, it's gotta, we, we gotta try to make it easy on the staff that's trying to keep us healthy. Because they're already tired. And I can, I can speak pretty, pretty effectively for the team that's gotta do that. What else you wanna talk about? Can we talk about anything else? Well, I've got one more quick one for you, Dean Schramm. Yeah. So do you expect there to be more in-person classes uh, next semester, given the lower rates and the high positivity we've already had? So you expect there to be uh, closer to normal or more like this semester once we opened up? More like this semester once we open up. Okay, thank you. And that's the safe answer. I'll be candid. That's the safe answer. Because um, I don't want to overpromise, but I, I know that we are we're just, we've seen no evidence. I repeat, we've seen no evidence in classrooms. And that's really, that's really valuable information for us. I got um, one more kind of two part question. I don't want to keep you too long, but. No, I'm um, happy to hear. So it's about leaving uh, this semester. So um, what will be the situation for students who are in quarantine as of its time to leave? And then um, students who have to have a test to go back to their home state, if they have to wait on those results, will they be allowed to stay, say in their apartment or will they have to move somewhere else? Yes and yes. So. Um, I know we've got, you know, like I said, we've seen a little bit of a spike this weekend. So we're telling students, you know, you've all gotten the call, right? Or not all of you, some of you've gotten the call and you're finding out your two weeks is going to bump up against your Thanksgiving. So they're going to be, they got to be quarantined here. Um, that certainly has not made a lot of folks happy. Um, if you need to get a test before you leave here, of course, this is a place you can stay. Um, we're not kicking anybody out. Um, uh, probably closer to um, uh, those the 14 days. Um, we really want people to, to finish out their 14 days in quarantine with us if they're here, right? I can't tie people down to their beds, but it's just really the safest bed option so that you don't get grandma sick, right? <laughs> you just got to fill out those 14 days just to make sure you have no signs of infection. So people will be able to stay here, like it or not, which they don't, so they're already like. And I think you have to get tested before you go to the state of New York, right? Yeah. So we'll certainly need to be here as long as you need to be here. Keep in mind, some of folks' permanent addresses are at the University of Dayton, right? We know we never really completely shut down. I think New York's it though. California? Arizona? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at all, I mean, things change so quickly.
What else can I ask or answer? So um, can I ask a couple questions? Great. Okay. So um, what, um, so what are people talking about? I mean, are, um, are, is everyone just COVID tired? Is it just COVID fatigue? Um, are people looking forward to going home? Yeah, see, I don't think people are, but I'm saying yes and no. I mean, like, I think it's just like getting worse. <laughs> and I know that sounds really bad. And I feel like for me, I feel like going home and break coming up, I feel like I'm just gearing for it to be worse than it was before. And worse so worse I, than what? I'm sorry. What like you cases, said? like cases are higher than before. There's more deaths. Okay. Um, and I yeah. mean, people are going to be traveling for the holidays. So I'm sure spreading is going to go through the roof. Um, people are nervous about the vaccination coming out. Um, I'm not nervous about that, but that's definitely a lot of like something that gives people a lot of anxiety. Um, and honestly, like, for school, I'm really nervous to come back next semester because I feel like we're all stressed and we all, we're not really getting that many breaks. And, you know, freshmen like grades are really bad. My grades, I luckily, I like have kept my grades up, but I feel like this is literally the worst semester of my life. <laughs> and I hate online classes. And basically I really feel like nothing's going to change next semester because we're still not getting any breaks. You know, we don't have any like um, any changes in the schedule to kind of relieve us of anything. It's still going to be basically the same as it is this semester. I actually think it's technically going to be longer. It is. And so like I'm worried too. Really preparing for how this semester has gone and how much I have disliked the semester. And then just knowing that next semester is going to be just as bad or potentially worse. It's just something I'm really not, I'm on, like, I'm sorry, I'm being really honest. It's just something I'm not really looking forward to. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just really how I feel. Yeah. And I know a lot of students feel the same way. And I know a lot of that stuff is out of your control <laughs> and it's out of the university's control, but it's just really anxiety bearing to just know that you hated this semester and you've struggled so hard this semester and it's just gonna be the same. So I think that's something a lot of students are talking about, um, just how hard the semester is and just knowing they're going to have to do it again next year. And longer. Mm -hmm. I know. And please don't apologize, Jada. I absolutely understand, appreciate, and agree. I'm, I'm worried too, right, that this has been kind of keeping, um, I made the example of like, when you shake up a bottle of pop or soda, whatever you may call it, and then you try to keep the cap on it. I mean, that's how it's felt like in some ways, um, just trying to keep it all in. And it's just been so hard. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot of praying about next semester. And I feel like professors as well um, have just, it, I feel like they haven't done a good job or not necessarily done a good job, but like have really overestimated how much work they need to give their students. And I don't know if that's something that's going to necessarily change next semester, but I know that if it's the same as this semester, I feel like it's just going to be just as bad. <laughs> and I feel like there's no system in place to really like hold professors accountable. <laughs> and so that's also just something I've been struggling with personally. And I know people have been struggling with as a campus. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What else have they been talking about? One thing I've heard from a lot of kids is that, uh, you know, they don't want to go home, A, because uh, UD is a heck of a time to be here. You know, we pretty much everyone who goes here really enjoys the school. And the other thing is a lot of kids who haven't gotten positive yet, which I am actually uh, thankful that I have are afraid to go home because they don't want to give it to their folks or get it there and, you know, maybe spread it with their own, you know, family, whatever at Thanksgiving. So that is something that's definitely worrying. And then also uh, grading, going to a totally online format at home, even with the same amount of homework as a normal college, 
is not practical for many students. I mean, it, it's really is an issue of equitability because folks are working when they're home, they're taking care of their siblings, their folks are asking them to do chores and whatnot. So, I mean, you know, it's a lot harder for me to even do my normal coursework at home. And I hear that from my roommates and kids pretty much every day now. So that's something that really needs to be worked on. Yeah, I was gonna add like, I literally share a workspace at home with my mom and my dad. So, and we only have a, we have a very small house. So like a lot of students don't have the privilege of like being able to have their own office and their own space to work in, which is also something that really affects students' grades. I mean, when I'm on campus, I really can't even study in my house. Like I have to go somewhere and study. But if we're in quarantine, you know, there's nowhere else I can do my work. So that's also just something I'm not looking forward to. Right. And, and and this is the place you need to be. Right. I mean, I've, I've always appreciated Dr. Spina's um, approach to this. Right. When we first were closing and we we're saying, so, gosh, with students coming back, are we ready to have them back? And he was like, this is where students need to be. Um, we always need to be ready. Um, and we have to set the best conditions we can because this is where students belong. And he's absolutely right on. He's spot on about that. Ryan, did you want to say something? Yeah, just real quick. I think a lot of students as well, at least from what I've heard, are kind of, um, there's just a general sense of confusion about certain protocols. Like it seems like, especially in the, when things are getting super heavy and a lot of people are being affected and the most important time to be following the rules and everything, I think people don't know where to go. I think a lot of the time they're hopping around with, you know, do I check the health center website? Do I check my email? Do I have to go back and check this spot? Do I, have to, like, I think they just don't know what to do. And I think it got to a point this past, well, this current semester of information overload, because I was talking to my roommates at one point and we had a friend who tested positive. So then we all had to get tested and we were all figuring out, like we were digging through our inboxes and going all over the website and doing all sorts of searches about like, where, did, where can I get tested? What kind of test do I need to get? Does this work? Does that work? What do I have to do? Do I need to go home? Can I go home? How can I tell my professors? Like, just there's just a laundry list of things to do, and there's no like specific procedure to follow. Like, it's out there. It's just not. It's not concrete. Concrete, if that makes sense. It's uh, it very much changed. changed. Yeah, and we've changed, right? You can wear masks outside. No, you can't. You know, like, when did that happen, right? You can have people on your porch. No, you can't. You got to have people on your porch with masks. No, you don't. I, I mean, I, 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 I absolutely agree. And one of the suggestions that has been made, Ryan, by yours truly, is um, we got to hit a reset button. I think that before folks come back in January, um, it's going to be this, this from here on out. Um, some of the things you might already know, some of the things I think that we're just going to have to start all over again. Um, hopefully not with the load of information, right? But at least more succinctly about what is expected, what's going to be expected of folks and students in the student neighborhood to what's expected in the residence halls, where's the masks are, where masks are expected, if you're positive, if you're not positive, if you've been in close contact or you're not. So um, I, I've heard that, Ryan, pretty consistently, particularly over these last few weeks. Because one of the things I, 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 Jim Froelich, who is the director of housing, has been really helpful to me. One of the things that we know is, so we set up the scale, right? The red scale, the green scale, you know, the yellow and all. The scale was created to go up. Right here, we start here and then things get a little more risky and then they get a little, and then we've got to shut down more as we go up. Truly what, ha what happened is the scale isn't made to go down. So as we've been working here this semester, as because there's no guidebook here, right? We're all doing this for the first time. So we have beginning and hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate that again next semester, right? So what happens when the scale goes down, right? Where does behavior, how is that impacted? Um, so that again, people are clear about what's expected at each level and why we, and what we've learned. We've learned that mask wearing is the most appropriate scientific kind of um, response we can give in this really moving, um, 
pandemic. So um, uh, long story short, Ryan, absolutely. I think we've learned a lot of lessons as an administration um, that our communication needs to be clear, more succinct. Um, and that's gotta happen bef before you all step on campus or while you step on campus in January. Thank you. Mason. So in regard to reevaluating the expectations for next semester, um, I know one of the bigger releases of stress um, that students use other than the weekend is uh, going to student organizations uh, and whatnot. Um, so like SJ, for example, is one of the, it's basically the main student organization that I'm a part of and I care about it a lot, but it's not the same going over Zoom. And so seeing as how we've not had um, a big increase or any evidence to show that the classroom has had a large effect on COVID. Do you think that we could have appropriate uh, student organization meetings next semester? Well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna punt this to Amy. I think that's where and why we wanna have this group convene um, so that we can, um, so we can convene and what can we do, Amy? Yeah, we were hoping that student organizations would be able to meet more frequently. And I think when we started the semester, we were uh, approving people to meet occasionally, but as time went on and we realized um, many of the concerns had to do with the indoor in-person gatherings that really could have been done online. So the question was, why are we adding this element of risk where it doesn't need to be there? If it's not classroom, if it can be done online, then that's what we should focus on. Um, you know, and I'll be honest with you, some students and departments were requesting four, five, six hour indoor gatherings, which can't happen. Uh, people were asking for gatherings with food or drinks where, you know, that requires people to take masks off. So we really had to start kind of tapering back what was being approved. And all of this is happening then as cases are going up. And so we were asked, you know, really look at these things. And if it can happen online, it should happen online. And I go, I know that's not what we, that's really not what we thought would happen. We thought we'd be able to have a lot more things in person, um, but that just didn't work out that way. Anything kind of else? going off Mason's thing there, if uh, yeah. if having classes in person has had no evidence of uh, community spread, then why would a club gathering following the same precautions? I mean, heck, we'll just have it in a classroom if there's no classroom spread. So that's part of the concern. So some even we started requiring that an advisor be present when you're in a classroom. You've got a faculty member present who should be ensuring that people are following all the protocols. It doesn't mean that we don't trust everybody, but there's just, when there's not management supervision of an activity, that's where that's where the university got a little risk adverse, a little more than we had anticipated. And the classroom is a requirement. So people are like, well, you have, that's the reason you're here. And everybody's acknowledging that the student organization participation, the leadership, all of those things are also important. But again, if there's a way that those can be done online, if people are going to in-person classes, that was the preference. And, and honestly, the, all the outdoor stuff thing, things, I think we approved unless it was larger groups, um, you know, and some people were asking to do some activities that uh, the risk level was higher. But in general, gatherings outside where people could say, here's our plan for keeping people six feet apart and everybody's gonna wear a mask that helped a lot. So the winter months, you know, when people come back January, February, it's going to be rough because there won't be anything we can do outside and we get that. I'd just like to thank you both for your input on this discussion. Um, I definitely want to continue to have it. Um, and I'm also excited to see how the experiment with um, the flag football intramurals returning goes uh, in regard to um, whether or not we'll be able to uh, do it well uh, next semester um, since that one is outdoors and many other are indoors um, and I don't want to ask for SJ to have an exception but I do just want to point out that our meetings are held in the ballroom which is basically the biggest room that um, we could hold it in so um, maybe we can get approved next year I don't know 
but we'll see. As we talked about it, the we'd have to have the whole ballroom with people really spaced out. Um, and then we have, you know, we don't have unlimited microphones. So to be, able, to be able to hear people with masks on, you'd have to use the mics and people would have to, you know, walk back and forth the length of the ballroom. It, it gets more and more complicated as we've talked about it. Uh, Chris and I have talked and Meg with Natalie and Annie and it just, it just seems like this is actually a better format. I know people want to be there in person, but there's lots of reasons where that's not really working. And I don't know if you have any classes in the ballroom, but because people were not maintaining the six feet of distancing with the tables that were set up, we had to move all the tables out and move in classroom desks. And so that's the other thing that we can't move those in and out for setups. Anybody who wants to use the ballroom has to use the classroom desks also. But right now, classrooms, um, classes are one of the only activities taking place in there. We've had a couple of movies uh, inside with lower attendance there, but you know people have to sit in those chairs. Just to add a little blurb onto that a little bit, um, it was also in discussion about whether or not we could have, it was plausible to have Senate in person, um, but we ultimately decided to not try to go that route just because if any people not within the organization wanted to come, and voice a public concern or a public announcement, they wouldn't be able to do that just because it would break the um, capacity limit. So that's another big reason as to why we had to decide to keep it on Zoom as well. Um, but does anyone else have any questions for Dean Schramm at the moment? I just have one quick one, hopefully. Um, what's the best way for students to give input if like their professor is either giving way too much work or isn't following COVID guidelines. Like I know a lot of students are scared to go straight to the Dean, um, but I know personally I've experienced my grade deteriorating and all that because of this. Yeah, I, I would, I would, I, you know, no, I don't know how, so come to me and we'll figure it out. Um, I, I, that's the only way this is gonna work. So let me say this and then I'll let you all go. Um, this has been really hard, I know for folks academically and that this has been, um, cause the less the faculty member, they don't have a playbook either, right? And they're compensating for not meeting cause sometimes they give them more homework. I don't know, it's been really challenging. And, and I think that Amy could probably give a really good insight as someone who's teaching a class this semester. So uh, there's chairs and there's advisors and there's all those folks that um, I think are, could be really helpful, but I know that can be intimidating. So I, I start with your safe places, right? And I would like to think that perhaps the Dean of Students Office could be that for you, right? There's Paul Swikert, there's Lindsay Maxim, there's myself, there's Amy Lopez Matthews. You know, use your safe spaces so that we can begin to kind of dissect where's the best place to go. Because your advisor, and, and if you're not trusting your advisor, you're not gonna do that. If you're not gonna trust your, or you're not, I shouldn't say trust, you're just not necessarily sure where it's gonna go. The chair is a person that's gonna, you can talk to. But if you feel like you need the support on the way, that's what we're here for. So, uh, Go ahead. No, Amy, you do it. I, I would also say you've got James here and the other academic reps who can take these concerns to the <sighs> academic senate. I mean, that's exactly why we have students on the academic senate is to be a liaison, to provide feedback to the senate about what the student experience is right now. And, and it is difficult. And I've got, you know, every week I've had another student, literally every week, another student get added to the online group who was going to be taking in person because of some COVID related something. And so I've got all these students segmented in. It's kind of a, talk about a moving target. I can't figure out, wait, who's doing what? What are we doing this week? It's, it's, it's been very challenging on this end too. But I also think if you, so certainly James, other academic reps, uh, your academic, the department chair that that person teaches for is going to be a good, place to take information or concerns. Um, none of these are gonna be, that, that's not gonna be confidential. They have to be able to tell them where this came from. Uh, the deans, the academic dean's office that they teach for is another good sort resource. Um, and then as uh, we heard last week, the student evaluation of teaching, I know that's the end of the semester. And you may think, well, I need intervention now before I get this grade. So now you know what your, what your different pathways are, but if, 
if you don't feel like you want to take any of those, put constructive criticism in that student evaluation of teaching because every department chair has to read those for all of their faculty. People do take that seriously. And I, as a faculty mem member, will not get access to any of that information until after my grades are turned in. So that's, that's, it will not impact your grade. Now, you may have to have that faculty person again, and you may say, I'm not gonna provide something there. So think about those other ways to get information to, to people. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate being part of the meeting anytime. Thank you so much, Dean Shrim. I really appreciate you being here. So does the rest of um, the members. So thank you so much and have a great Sunday. Yeah, yeah, you too. And again, any hot topics come and you want a last minute, um, I'll certainly make myself available. Thank you so much. Thank really you for coming. Yeah, thank Hello. you. I'll take care of yourself, right? Take care of yourselves. All right, I'm leaving. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right, wish me luck. Bye. All right, Michael, do we have any funding presentations tonight? We do not. We do not, okay. All right, perfect. So that being said, Grant, will you do attendance, please? Yep. Uh, James Brill. Here. Jada Brown. Present. Jules Carr Chelman. Present. Natalie Coppolino. Here. Lillian Dickman. Here. Jesse Edwards. Here. Michael Fields. Here. Sophia Garcia. Here. Jessica Garvin. Jessica Garvin. Uh, Mason Gordon. Here. Uh, Daniel Hennessy. Present. Courtney Henthorne. Here. Anna Hobie. Here. Andrew Hubert. Andrew Hubert. Uh, Jake Jagels. In attendance. Bridget Mooney. Here. Ryan Pearson. Here. Annie Philbin. Here. Grace Perucci. Here. Kat Pistoni. Here. Tommy Reese. Here. Luis Rogel. Yeah, it's Rogel. Oh, okay. My bad, Luis. Uh, Jack Santi. Here. Kelly Stewart. Here. Ben Thomas. Here. Jacob Troutwine. Oh, great. Here. And Rachel Benneman. Here. Cool. Thanks, everybody. All right. Do we have any public announcements tonight? Okay. Do we have any public comments and concerns? I'm pretty sure it's all um, SGA members tonight. So see any public comments and concerns? Okay. Seeing none, I will ask if there are um, any SGA members who would like to give a report. Just go ahead and unmute yourself. Yep, Jay. Thank you, President Copolino. So my report tonight is uh, more so of something I would like to implore all of the senators to write some legislation. Student government Senate is main job is to write legislation that affects the student body. So if there's something you see or something that you've heard about from your constituents, and if you don't know of anything, you can ask your constituents, go ahead and write a bill to try and fix this solution. Past examples have been things like getting more picnic tables outside of uh, Mary Crest or water fountains in a building. Find something that you feel passionate about or something that your constituents really care about and try and write a bill. Bills do not necessarily have to be about the University of Dayton. If there's some global humanitarian thing that you feel it would be in, uh, in a powerful statement for the UDSGA to make, that would be beneficial. Whatever we can do to show progress and that we are able 
to make a difference in students' lives. We have not had nearly as much legislation and we totally understand why with COVID and Zoom and everything. And uh, in the near future, we'll be hosting a little seminar Zoom meeting on how to write legislation if you have any questions. And if you do, please, please feel free to reach out to me, Mason, Natalie, Annie, Chris, uh, anyone, you know, would really be glad to help you. But it would really, really be fantastic if we could have some legislation. Thank Chair you. Chair Jangles, um, where can we find uh, the resources to learn how to write legislation? So everyone is part of the Google, the SGA Google Drive. It's in it's in your shared drive folder. So sure. there is uh, a folder called legislation. In legislation, there is a uh, a folder that should be something like examples or uh, let me Templates. see what it's actually. Some long lines there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got uh, examples for how, it, so how you write it. So it's got the formatting for the general part. And then if you want some good examples, you can go into the past legislation for this semester or uh, past legislation for past years and take a look at just some of those things uh, and look at the writing on those examples of what bills have been about, what and what your bills could be about. And so we just, we write something and then we introduce it. In, so in you, you, write, you write the bill, Senator, and then you send me an email saying that you, so you, then you put it in the draft, uh, you put your draft in the, uh, the folder, you send me an email by Wednesday, I'll look it over and make sure that the formatting's okay, you know, that we're not saying something, you know, absolutely out there, uh, but, it, it is your bill and the executive committee or anything does not touch it up. You know, we might work with people to try and add things, take things away, whatever would make the best, most efficient legislation. And then it'll be brought up on Senate floor. Any member okay. is able to write Thank legislation. You. Mason. Yeah, uh, if you want an example, I literally just now wrote a resolution. It's in the pending folder. Um, so if you want to reference something, go off of it to write your own resolution. Um, just take a peek at that. I mean, it's of course rough because I wrote it just now, but uh, if you also, if you need any help, you can reach out to um, me or any other exec members because um, we're all totally willing to help you write any resolution you may want. Thank you, Mason. All right, thanks, Jake. Do any other SGA members have a report tonight? Luis. Yeah, oh, Luis no. and James. There you go. My bad, James. But, uh, yeah, so um, what is it called? Um, being the director of Campus Unity, I actually had a, an open meeting this week and I formed my committee on Wednesday. Um, I, it is filled with seven members. Um, and of those seven members, I have a representative from BATU, Black Action Through Unity, a representative from AAA um, that was already appointed, Shara, um, Asian American Association, someone from EOL, El Orgullo Latino, or the Hispanic Club, um, someone from Muslim Student Association, and then someone from Spectrum. Um, I think it's important as SGA, um, we're not gonna make this campus better until we make it better for everybody. And that's only possible when everyone's voice feels heard. Um, so that's my objective through Campus Unity. Um, kind of like uh, Jake was saying, I, I plan on writing um, like some type of legislation to make sure and continue there will always be representation from these organizations um, because that's the way that voices are always gonna be heard. Um, because what's to say that the next director of Campus Unity um, just like picks their own friends and stuff like that, even if they're not the most fit, right? So um, that's the plan. Um, and then through a discussion with Ryan and Jada, uh, I, along with my committee, started working on the Tough Talk coming up on Tuesday. Um, the title, or well, it got postponed now, but the Tough Talk that we're working on is um, systemic racism in the, in the Dayton community. And then um, we're gonna try to focus it in on, um, we're gonna try to bring UD into the mix as well. Um, so yeah, um, I, it's very early stages. Um, working, I'm working on it along with my committee and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, definitely I'll keep being very transparent about it, keep everyone in the loop. Um, but if anyone has any advice or questions, definitely feel free to email me or um, I don't know, DM me on Slack or something like that too. I'll, I'll definitely respond. Well, for sure. Thank you. All. You know, thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, Louise. James, you want to go ahead? Yes, thank you. So the Academic Affairs Committee has worked hard these past two weeks to create a survey 
that will be sent out to all students, hopefully early this week, asking about pretty much all things academics this semester. And some of the things we touch on include uh, workload, uh, the pass fail system, whether that should be in place or not. Um, other things such as mental health and how teachers have adapted to the online world. And a few other things are included in the survey. And so what I ask of each of you is to one, complete the survey because your feedback is very important and also to spread the survey to other students as well and to your friends and to your classmates and whatever group chats you have. Um, I think it's very important that we get a lot of feedback from a variety of different people and especially first years. So, so the first year representatives that we have, the four of you, it'd be great if you can spread it in the group chats and among your friends as well, because I think their feedback is from first years is very important as well. So James, uh, where can I find that, the survey? Yeah, so early this week, this upcoming week, there'll be an email that'll be sent out to the entire student body. And I will also, with the, with the survey link in it, and I also post a survey link in the Slack as well that you can that you should be able to share with people as well all right i'll send it to my friends thank you all right thanks james does anyone else have a report they would like to give i right, will go real quick um on top of the um upcoming tough talk um the campus safety committee has a event coming up on tuesday in partnership with public safety and um, psas um, it is PathPoint eligible, and we got a bigger Zoom license, so up to 1,000 people can attend. It would be awesome if we could have some SGA representation just to see what everything's going on and uh, see what it's all about. I can send um, a reminder in Slack, and for those of you that need PathPoints, it'll be going out in the email tomorrow. Um, another quick thing, uh, let's keep using Slack. It's great to see everyone using it still. Um, if you could, please set a picture just like 1850, keep doing that. Um, if you could all set a picture in your position, that would be awesome. That way, if you need to contact someone, you know who to, you can just type in the position you're trying to find and the person will come up. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome. I think it would just be super helpful, especially when we're talking about reaching out to people for assistance with class and grades and everything else. So yeah, thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Do we have any other reports tonight? Okay, seeing none, um, I will go ahead and jump into my report. So we will have another update coming up in the Campus Digest this week. It'll just include um, the legislation confirming our newly appointed SGA members, Louise and Courtney. So keep your eyes open for that on Wednesday. And then finally, for our SGA anti-racism action steps, um, our first meeting for our internal working group will either be Thursday or Friday. And we will be discussing um, the elections process. So our chair of the elections committee, Tyler Fogg, will be there. So if anyone outside of this group has any interest in attending this meeting, just feel free to let me know by either texting me, messaging me on Slack, or emailing me. Um, but other than that, I don't have any other updates. So Jagles, do you want to go ahead and get us into Senate floor? Certainly, President Coppolino. It appears that there is no legislation for floor tonight. Uh, Attorney General Gordon, is that correct? Seeing that there is no legislation, is there any opposition to skipping uh, the legislative part of Senate today? Please uh, unmute yourself and say something if you would like to open up Senate floor. Seeing and hearing no objections, uh, we will adjourn. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, everyone.